me again. <laughs> but this time I have <laughs> fantastic people next to me. Even more fantastic, the other two were there before as well. So first off, we're going to have a bit of Q&A here with these fantastic people here. So I'm going to ask each one of you the kind of same question, and we'll see if you have some even more intelligent answers that came out of Chris's <laughs> my mouth. So number one is, what is the biggest topic of importance that your customers are talking about right now in the region? So if you want to elaborate a little bit on that, you have a bit of time. So Mel, why yeah, don't you go sure. first in Australia? Good question. Uh, look, I think when talking to customers, there's probably a couple of themes coming through right now. The first I'm finding when talking is a lot around the traveller experience. So I know traveller experience has always been an important part of um, a travel program and procurement consideration, but it's always been coupled with cost and compliance in addition to traveller experience as the collective. And I'm finding now when talking to customers, the traveller experience is actually the number one objective that they're, they're looking for right now. And a good example is we had an RFP presentation uh, a couple of weeks ago and they asked us to pitch the online booking tool. And they said, just purely focus on the experience. Don't worry about the technical capability. So that's something that, that's new to us that we've always focused on both, but people are really looking at how do we make it really easy for travelers? How do we consider their um, on-road journeys? So looking at accommodation, particularly now, obviously with COVID concerns and cleanliness, et cetera. Um, and even cabin, like looking at class of travel and how they make that journey easy. And I think it's two things driving that. One is, um, you know, you, you, yourself and Chris talked about um, the great resignation and obviously it's such a hot market right now in terms of employee attention, uh, attraction and retention. And it's just such a core recruitment, um, I guess, strategy now in terms of the travel program because customers and employees are asking, you know, what, are, what is your travel program policy and what, what are the entitlements because they have the ability to, to look at different companies. Um, the second part of that as well is really looking at, I guess, how the last two and a half years, people have been sitting at home. So, you know, companies are looking to us and saying, how do we get our travellers back on the road? Because they're not used to getting up at 6am. They don't want to spend time away from their families on weekends. So the traveller experience has become so core to getting those customers out and about travelling again. That's where we're trying really to help customers. Uh, but the second part is around connection. So we're hearing a lot um, around how do we connect again. And our meeting and events teams are absolutely so busy at the moment, which is amazing because we didn't think they would come back this quickly. But customers are really looking to bring people together to create culture again and to create connection, but also very much around getting out in front of their customers and obviously winning business and um, looking after their customers. So very much a theme of people, I think, in the ANZ region. Ah, interesting, actually. Mm. That's very good insight, actually. And Billy, from the Americas, do you see similar trends or what, what's happening over Absolutely. there? Absolutely. I think the, the push for a digital self-service um, environment is really important from an efficiency perspective and making sure that we have the right tools available in front of travelers to make the right decisions. And I think a lot of the um, contextual information that's required, I think we've we've seen a, an increase in demand for that, and we've made some acquisitions and enhancements in our platforms to give people the information they need at the right time. I think traditionally, a lot of information was looking backwards. I think the real push has been to serve up things in front of the traveler in you know, that pre-booking stage so that they can make the right decision for both themselves as well as their company's program. And I think one thing that we've, we've definitely seen that we probably weren't expecting was the interaction of people and our expert consultants with a lot of the tools that are in the market. Mm. You know, most things were built to be self-service from beginning to end. And I think we've seen that where we're at right now with recovery is there's a lot of uncertainty with people when it's their first or second trip back on the road. So it's really highlighted the importance of our consultants to engage whether somebody's booking, you know, started a booking online with a tool but to really be there to answer a lot of questions, not necessarily about the logistics of the trip. It's a lot of reassurance about whether it's restrictions or health and safety. So it's really making sure that we're able to supplement the technology that exists there to deliver on that customer experience that Mel mentioned that's always been important, but has really been highlighted. That's interesting. So really a big digital push, but at the same time, even more of a push with the service together with the digital part, Correct. actually. Yep. Very interesting, actually. And Bertrand and Asia, I know Asia has evolved from or recovered from the uh, pandemic a little bit different as well. What have you seen from the Asia region? So first of all, Asia is a huge region. Like if you go from India to Japan, it could be very different. 
and it's also very complex. So what we see right now is almost the creation of two blocks. So you have North Asia, that includes Japan, China, and Hong Kong. I would put, oh, China and Hong Kong admittedly are the same country, but you know, in, in different policies. And what we see in this, in this block is very much COVID, COVID, COVID. Like all the news are about COVID. They are still basically where the rest of the world was 12 months ago. And I don't think they see yet the perspective of reopening and what it's going to look like. And unfortunately, I think this is going to last for at least a little while because obviously China is committing to their zero COVID policy and there is no sign right now that they want to move away from that. Japan might be a different story. We will see in the coming month. But that takes time. So then you have the south of the region, which includes India and all of Southeast Asia, which, to the surprise of everyone, has reopened much faster than we were anticipating. And then the problem we have in this part of the world now is capacity, mm. which is kind of hilarious, thinking that probably 12 months ago, you didn't have more than five people on any flight you know, flying to this region, and now you cannot find a seat. Um, and for all of us flying from Asia yesterday, like flights were absolutely full, the airports are full, and we actually struggle to find seats for our customers. And this is what people talk about because obviously the airfares are going high, you know, in most of those countries, and uh, we have a problem with airlines putting back capacities because we just don't have the airplanes and the staff to uh, fly. So that, that's basically where we are right now. It's a bit of a dual world. And you know, we'll see how things evolve in the next 12 months. But it's actually quite encouraging for the future because to, to the point that was mentioned earlier, the thing that is very obvious is like either you have restrictions and people don't travel, but when they are lifted, people just go. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what we see everywhere, which is, I think, quite interesting. No, that's great, actually. So a lot of pressure on supply chain, but also that Asia may not have come to the same level of recovery as we've seen in other parts of the world. But talking about other parts of the world, Steve, you responsible for the European part and also Middle East and Africa. How have you seen the challenges from a customer perspective in your region? Um, well, um, servicing is 100% the hot topic. I know we've delved into it. Um, you and Chris mentioned it earlier on as well. We're in this sort of perfect storm, let's say, where um, customers with that return to travel, some of the restrictions, the uncertainty, we're seeing about double the number of inquiries per booking that we saw pre-pandemic. Um, so that's put a huge amount of pressure on um, turnaround. Chris mentioned earlier as well, we spent 18 months down at 90% of earnings, so we unfortunately had to let go a lot of staff from across the region. We're in massive re-recruitment drive. It was your biggest regret. You know, you can't foresee the future, therefore, you know, um, but we, we're, we're, we're here now. Um, we're putting in a tremendous amount of work on recruiting our alumni. We're also looking at how do we free up those um, service agents to be able to concentrate on servicing. Um, so we're looking at centralizing a lot of the administration tasks. Um, and that's really the, uh, the important topic. And we think hopefully the um, great account management team are working very closely with customers as well to look at how do they self-service, how do we give them the assurances to do some of those lower value topics or, or, or um, routes and then free up and then come through for those complex inquiries with our agents as well. But hopefully over the next couple of months, we'll start seeing a good return to um, good SLA periods oh, as well. Very interesting. I think as we talked about before, I know Europe has been a ramping up very quickly actually for this. Actually on that topic, maybe I forgot to ask you a little bit, in terms of recovery rate, if you compare your trading levels versus the pre-COVID levels, maybe just a quick figure is where do you stand today? So maybe I'll start with you, Mel. Where do yeah, you stand we, today? Well, we were hovering just a month ago around the, the, the high 70s. Um, and then the last week we've jumped into the 90s. So it's just rapidly returning. So we're, we're near to pre-COVID volumes and, and further. Great problem to have, it we is, hope. Yeah. Billy, your side? We're high 60s, low 70s. And you see that ramping up quite quickly over the last couple of months? It, it, it started to spike the last two and a half months. It's really going ahead leaps and bounds. Interesting. And Bertrand? Again, <laughs> to, be, to be the difficult guy here. So in China, we were at 70% during the overall COVID time because domestic traffic was actually huge during the entire COVID time. Now it's down to 15%. Mm -hmm. And in Singapore or India, um, Singapore was at 85% last month, which is absolutely amazing. And India is already back to pre-COVID level of 100%. And that also shows that Asia has still a huge potential of growth and I think all data suggests, IATA is just published numbers and all that, but this is going to be the goal for the future. It's just, when is it happening? China is the question mark. Mm. Yeah. yeah, indeed. 
And Steve? Um, yeah, a couple of months ago, we were at about 50% in the EMEA region. We're now um, tracking for about 80. So it's doubled over a couple of months, hence why some of those challenges I just uh, referenced yeah. earlier. So again, we do like that the business is returning, the travel is returning, all of us, but it doesn't come without challenges. That's a good point, actually, for this. So second question here to elaborate a little bit for you guys on as well, that we talked about a lot of change in the industry. We talk about it on a global scale. But from a regional perspective, what would you call out as being the biggest change that happened within your business, but that you think is going to be there to stay? So something has not gone away for this. So maybe this time I'll start with Steve over on your end. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, so actually I started in FCM just after the global financial crisis. Um, so I, I'm actually going to take us back over a decade. Um, one of the biggest things I saw was the appetite for companies to change and make a change. That was particularly focused on visibility of spend and then really trying to hone in on that. Um, so what I see here is that using this crisis as a bit of a momentum to really have um, and pay a lot more attention to duty of care around both travellers and the environment and the planet. And I think those are topics we're obviously going to talk about a lot today. But um, it does give me confidence that a decade ago, with some appetite to change, um, I think we can get some real momentum in this area. Amazing. And Bertrand in Asia? Yeah, I think to my surprise, the sustainability question is coming very strongly and driven mostly by financial institutions and governments. Um, and it, I think it's a good thing, obviously. The other thing that I find interesting right now is because the regional traffic in Asia, that used to be the top traffic right in the, in the region, is very depressed because of what I described earlier in North Asia situation, there is much more long haul. And what we see right now is that the length of the trips that we book for our customers is vastly different. So when two years ago people were going for an average of five days, now they are going for an average of 14 days, which is absolutely massive. And the reason behind is that they haven't traveled for a long time. Most of them are trying to actually extend for leisure reasons or seeing their families if you have expats going home and things like that. And the trips are also much um, more legs. So I don't know how long this is going to last, to your point earlier, but I do think that this is also a bit of a trend mixing a bit more leisure and corporate at the same time and using the opportunity of travel. And has that changed anything within your business uh, to actually cater for this new demand? The, the thing, unfortunately, is that it's driving much more demand offline, should I say, because people to do those long trips need to talk to expert consultants. There is still a fair bit of restriction. Uh, I shouldn't say restriction, it's more like all those rules around should I need a test and what type of test and how long before traveling and all of that. So if you do five legs, obviously those questions are going to multiply and that's why they need to rely on the experience of travel consultants, which again impact the productivity and the overall service delivery because um, we are obviously stretched when it comes to um, employee numbers, so you know, that, that's what we're dealing with right now. Oh, interesting. And Billy from America, so you, I know a lot of the articles and the thought leadership has come from them during the pandemic. There's a lot of discussion there that you get everything's going to change. We had a lot of the Microsoft of the world to say the business travel changing forever. What have you seen from your perspective? I've probably seen more customers review and amend their policies, where traditionally it was two or three customers at a time would have that as a, as a focus. It's pretty much across the board now. And I think when they're rebuilding and recalibrating their policies, it's become more focused on traveler well-being as well as some of their corporate goals, whether it's sustainability or you know, whatever is important to them as an organization. It's become way more of a trend than you know, the one-offs here and there. And I think that's, that's where our, our account management team and our consulting business has probably assisted our travelers uh, and our customers a lot more than they have historically in that same um, that whole policy review and recreation so it's not about throwing the whole thing out but saying if we're going to recalibrate these are the three or four um, important things for our employees from whether it's for staff retention or reducing the impact mm. of you know a longer trip on on some of their employees so mm. yeah. oh, very interesting actually um, last but not least Mel? Yes, we, we've definitely seen the rise of the travel consultant 
but particularly the expertise of our consultants uh, during this time. And obviously, they're just getting so much inquiry channeled through to them just because of the ever nature changing um, conditions. But also, we've noticed a real decline initially in online booking uptake from our customers. And I think it's just around traveller confidence, but all of the changes, but also the credits that are obviously um, quite challenging right now for customers to use. But there is a massive issue in the supply chain in general as well, particularly in Australia with our regional Australian content. So to give an example, at the moment for every one inbound phone call we receive, our consultants are making four outbound phone calls, calling around different hotels, regional hotels, to try and find availability for customers. And you know, in our situation, our floods and um, weather situations haven't helped us in those regions, but it's putting a lot of pressure onto our consultants and customers are just really looking for that hand-holding and expertise. Um, from an online booking perspective, you know, we started initially in January when business started to come back. It was sitting at around that 40% adoption level, which pre-COVID that was around the high 80s. We've now managed to um, convince customers to jump back online to around about that 70%, which is obviously helping to ease the pressure on the front end. But we still see some of that hesitation that they're really looking for the expertise of the consultant. So for us, we've always taken the approach of trying to automate the simple and then leave the complex for the expertise of our consultants. And we're just finding that simple is actually no longer simple. So it's actually really difficult to automate. Uh, but that's the challenge for us now is how do we redefine what simple looks like and how do we make sure that we can automate some of those technologies and um, processes so that our consultants can spend more time with customers and can assist them with those difficult situations. Very good, very good. So what I take from that is, again, there's a lot of changes which you know already, but the travel experience is changing. We see much more of a service despite the digital evolution in, in uh, America specifically. And Bertrand is saying in terms of we're not fully there, but the supply chain is still struggling with this. And obviously the return to travel is causing a little bit of friction to get this machine up and running again. But I just want to say a massive thank you to these four extremely intelligent people for sharing a bit of their regional expertise, actually. And I will hand it over back to our MC to run through the rest of the day for this. When well, next, you're going to hear some very interesting speakers as well, beyond ourselves. So thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.